points where chemistry is going to help and has already helped in the future is first of all in the establishment of the correct structure and we all know that for these superconductors oxygen content is important we need rapid and reliable methods to determine the oxidation state and the oxygen content in superconductors that's chemistry so why why bco is one of the most well known high tc superconductors it is generally called a one to three compound however we like to call it the copper 1212 phase The reason is that uh, there are two types of copper atoms, crystallographically in different positions. Copper 1 atoms are in copper oxygen chains in the charge residue portion of the structure and then we have a copper 2 atoms in CO2 planes, in superconducting CO2 planes. These high TC materials are oxides, they of course contain oxygen. And we shall see that the, the oxygen stoichiometry of the oxide is an essential issue. Depending on the amount of oxygen, the properties can change drastically. When we change the oxygen content from 7 down to 6, the valence uh, varies between 2.5 and 1.5 and in a linear way. This is uh, quite different from the situation for the copper atoms in CO2 planes. It's not uh, linear, but there is uh, something like this. What is very interesting to observe is that TC seems to behave exactly in the same way. So from this, uh, the very straightforward interpretation is that uh, for the superconductivity, the whole doping level or the copper valence in CO2 planes is most crucially important. So, uh, even though we have uh, different types of layers in high TC superconductors, so always the oxygen content in the superconducting CO2 planes remains constant and all the changes in the oxygen content occur only in the charge level block from the change. And this is rather important because uh, now we can keep the coordination sphere around the copper atoms in CO2 planes constant. We all the time have the uh, same coordination for all the copper atoms in CO2 planes. And it seems to be important for the localization of charge in these planes. Coulometric titration of oxygen. The method is very powerful for controlling and measuring oxygen stoichiometry in many oxide materials um, and it's been applied a lot to IBCO. Of course you don't know where the oxygen is in the structure, it's a global method so you're just measuring the oxygen surrounding a, a volume around that sample so you don't know where the oxygen is in the sample. If you are dealing with IBCO 6 then the chains are empty. If you are dealing with IBCO 7 then the chains are full. What happens when x is in between 0 and 1? It means that in the chains you have vacancies of oxygen and you have oxygen. The order of oxygen and vacancies in only in the chains of ICO. Imagine that along this you have fragmented chains, then vacancy, then fragmented chains. So the black points are the copper. So here is a fragment of chain, here are vacancy, and here starts again another fragment of chain. From a copper point of view, there are three copper. We call copper one, copper one means the chains, copper two means the copper and the planes. So this copper one has two vacancy as first neighbor, but it still coordinates to the apical oxygen which is above and which is below. This copper is the end of a fragment. It has three oxygen coordinated. So its name will be copper one because it's the chains coordinated to three. The third one, it has the two apical oxygen but no vacancy. How one can resolve all the line of nuclear quadrupolar resonance. The spectroscopy is related to electrostatic interaction of the nuclear spin with all the charge surrounding. The charge may be the ions or the electrons.
From superconductivity point of view, I would say that NMR, spin lattice relaxation time, was the first experimental confirmation of the BCS theory. For IPCO, with natural abundance, we have two isotopes, copper 63 and copper 65. On the figure are represented only two sites, copper 2, which has two vacancy as first neighbor, plus two oxygen, and copper 3, which is the end of a fragment. As we have two isotopes, instead of two lines, we have four lines. Third, uh, copper is out of the range of frequency shown on that figure. For IPCO, with the same content of oxygen, the metallurgy of the preparation can give you different samples depending on the ordering of this oxygen and the vacancies and all the chains. In a high quality sample, that means that you have succeeded in having almost empty chains or almost full chains. High quality sample for which the total amount of oxygen is 6.32, which means that approximately one has about two-thirds of vacancies, one-third of oxygen. Some kind of ordering Full, empty, empty, full, empty, empty. This is perfection. It doesn't exist, of course. This oxygen content is just at the beginning of the superconducting dome in the electronic phase diagram. So this sample is, has a very, very low TC, even no TC. It's just at the starting. If we go exactly between the two ideal stoichiometries, so if we have IBCO oxygen 6.5, where we have one out of every two chain sites occupied by oxygen, close to 6.5, we, we can have some partial ordering. If we're a long way away, say at 6.1 or, or going the other direction at 6.9, then there's not really much evidence, or at least it's very difficult to know whether the oxygen defects are ordered or not. So that certainly at oxygen 6.9, which is the most common superconducting uh, composition for IBCO, IBCO is not the only combination of yttrium, barium, copper and oxygen that, that, that exists. There are at least two well-defined intergrowth structures, which are the so-called 124 and the 247 structures. If you go to high um, pr oxygen pressures, you start to get into the 247-248 phase stability regime. At high temperature, yttrium 123 is a stable phase. But if you change the composition, if you add copper oxide, uh, you are shifting the system to stability phase of yttrium 124. Even if you use pure yttrium 123, you also can get a yttrium 124 by cooling the sample. The problem is that kinetic of this reaction is very slow. That's why on the end you have yttrium 123 as a sta metastable phase. You well know the diamond is a metastable table form of carbon which exists for millions of years. Phase diagrams are at high temperatures and, and once we're down at, at, at room temperature, and let, let alone cryogenic temperatures for superconductivity, then everything is, is quenched or at least oxygen mobility is very, very slow even at room temperature. So that we, need, we shouldn't worry too much about what high temperature phase diagrams predict. The surface of IBCO is known to amorphize just upon standing in air. And between the amorphous layer and the IBCO, we can start to have intergrowths perhaps of other structures. It may well be, and it's not yet known, that this is the mechanism for IBCO's decomposition.